Hello and welcome to Sales Development Represent, a video series dedicated to modern best practices and actionable tips for SDRs. In this episode, we're diving into discovery calls and demo best practices for SDRs. And joining us today is Francois Boudreau from the uh, Encore Business Solutions. I hope I pronounced your name right, by the way. My French is, is not great. <laughs> uh, Francois is an experienced sales practitioner, nearly a decade of experience selling into a variety of industries. So, uh, Francois, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself real quick. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I've, I've had the uh, good fortune of uh, selling for, um, yeah, like you said, almost a decade. And so, uh, you know, I'm pretty passionate about making sure we're uh, very respectful of people's time and discovery, both on the on the seller uh, side and, and the client side. So really happy to talk about this uh, today with you, man. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, and, and like you mentioned, you know, um, part of the, the reason that we put together this series is knowing that modern buyers are just way more self-educated than ever before. And, and they often do a lot of their own research before reaching out to sellers in the first place. So for SDRs, it makes it a lot more difficult to sort of navigate discovery calls and really influence buying decisions. So to kind of kick things off, tee up a question for you here. In today's selling environment, what is an SDR's purpose on the discovery call? You know, I think, um, you know, we could go into all these different selling acronyms around BANT or gap selling. And I think, you know, really you want to try and drill into the, the why around, you know, what's that compelling event that's making them look at either buying a product, replacing a product, uh, upgrading, you know, is there really a good reason? Is there, um, and, and the buyer may not know, um, you know, that compelling event, or is there, is there a risk if they don't do something? You know, I think, I think those are, um, things you want to get to um, and, and what you might find as you start to really drill into those types of questions that um, the person you're talking to may not know that. So then you need to find out, you know, who are those other people? Because I don't think it's just one person. Who are those other people within the organization that are going to help you find that out? For sure. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of account mapping, a lot of understanding, you know, who really owns what um, it, it can get kind of confusing for SDRs, especially if they're new and, and kind of kicking off the process. Like discovery call is this big buzzword that they hear. And for some reps, they're like, what does this even mean? What am I discovering? So for sure, for sure, for sure. And, and, and they need to really, uh, you know, you, you mentioned it, right? The buyers are coming in educated. So you need to be as the rep, um, you know, it sounds almost impossible, but almost more educated than, than the, the buyer. So you, you need to know, like, you need to do your homework. Who who the customer is, what their industry is, uh, what problems they're fa facing so that you can help, you know, help them uncover what that, that challenge is or that risk is because they may not know it. But you also may also help them point out that there is really no compelling event like this is more of a nice to have. And and, you know, you are really doing them a favor if you give them some of their time back because they may be going through this exercise of thinking they need to replace this, but it could just be frustration, right? They, or someone told them that they should go look into this, but there really isn't a compelling reason to do this. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Francois, uh, especially because, you know, getting into your point on methodologies, um, they're not just for discovering and trying to win the deal. They're equally to save time for SDRs and make sure that, you know, I want you handing off leads that are not only qualified, but hopefully have some sort of triggers or engagement that, that is going to lead to a close. And so to kind of get into methodologies, because I think there are so many, because there are so many spaces, there are so many industries and ways to sell, and there are so many products to sell. And so when you think about methodologies in a discovery call, you know, is BANT still effective or are there ways that SDRs and teams need to adjust how they're doing discovery based on today's buying and selling environment? Well, I mean, I think, you know, when, when people throw out BANT, uh, you know, budget comes up and so there's a raging debate, you know, well, they may not even know they have budget or you can create budget. I mean, I would say, you know, specifically today in, in the COVID challenge, um, you know, they may not have budget. So, you know, I think budget is probably a more, um, you know, realistic uh, issue today. But, but I think, you know, um, you know, the one thing I always kind of try and figure out too is like how, how painful is, is the current status quo and is moving to something different worth that pain? Like, are they willing to actually take on the, the pain of something new? Um, and, and is it worth that change? So like budget and price, you know, I, I, I mentioned something to yesterday and I mentioned price because I think it's worth having a level set right out of the gate. You know, like 
the range, right? So they, they may just not really fully comprehend the total cost. And if they really can't, you know, swallow that, then, then it may be worth, um, you know, parking that. But, but I think it's also, you know, it, it dovetails into, you know, what is this, you know, risk? What is the problem? And so, you know, they may only see one slice, but as you start to dig in a bit, you may start to open up other lanes where you see, hey, man, you've got these other problems. Um, those other problems, you know, could have some budget allocated to them as well. So I think as you start to kind of drill in, you, you might find some more budget. So, you know, I'm not saying BANT isn't uh, valid, but I think, you know, there, there's lots of different methodologies and some people prescribe to, to one uh, more than another. But I think at the end of the day, like you said, um, you know, you, you want to close. But for me, a close is a yes or a no. It, you know, you just don't want a maybe or a no decision. You know, you'd rather just figure out we're moving or we're not and, and just, just keep moving on. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so do you think there are any commonalities or maybe some key things that all methodologies should have? Or what, what's the common thing to look for in a discovery call that, you know, SDRs in general can look at to say, okay, this is what I need to discover in order to see if I can get them to the next step or if they're even qualified for the next step. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to the, uh, you know, if they can clearly articulate the problem, um, because sometimes they, they can't. And, you know, so they may be on a fact finding mission, they may not be the decision maker. Um, and, and, you know, as they start to describe that, you'll start to figure out, okay, is this a nice to have or need to have? And I think if you've done your preliminary homework, and you know, some of the pain points they have, um, and or industry pain points, you, you know, you can start to kind of map that back and go, oh, this doesn't really jive. Um, and, and again, like if, you know, from, from the, you know, as, as you mentioned, AJ, like who are the people that you know are influencers because we can, we can find all that out today. Right. So you, you mm -hmm. can, you can dig up an org chart. So if you're talking to one person and you know, you need to go a few levels up um, and they can't answer the question, then maybe, you know, you need to get to that next level to, to validate, okay, you know, if these people can't articulate it, then, you know, maybe internally it's just a, you know, a power struggle, right. Cause, cause that happens, right. Bob from one department doesn't like John and he's going to go find a better product to make him look bad. And you're just going to be caught in the middle. It's like the last place that an SDR wants to be is they're there, you know, thinking, Hey, I found a, a good reason as to why this technology or solution or whatever could help you guys out. And yeah, one side is like hundred percent, man, like let's go for it. And the other side is like, no, 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 that's going to make me look bad. Maybe let's, you know, table this. So it's a tough, situation for a rep to be in. And, and that kind of brings up the point that like every situation is not going to go as planned, I guess. Um, each situation is very different. And I think the idea that you just brought up in grace of the question you asked in regards to consistency is, is important because you do want to have some semblance of a structure going into a discovery call or a demo and preparing for that. But also you have to know that like you could run into a situation like you just mentioned where two sides of the same company are fighting over different tools and you're caught in the middle. So like, how do you really make sure that you're structured, but also personalizing a lot of the outreach that you're doing and making sure that you're talking to the right people? Cause that's a fine line for a lot yeah. of reps to toe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, as I'm thinking about this, you know, if I dial it back to that initial point of contact, we all know it, you know, today's speed is really important. So, you know, I know anecdotally, if I've gotten uh, back to prospects really quickly, you know, my win rates have been higher. And, and that wasn't the only factor, but I think if you look at the whole sales cycle, you have to remember they're, they're you know, it's like this courting period. So they're going like, hey, like AJ and Grayson are respectful of my time on these discovery calls, right? They're not taking two hours, they're on time, they're bringing the right people. You know, they reached out to me originally uh, really quickly. They had great questions. So all of those things are building this storyline around, you know what, we actually probably want to do business with these guys versus we like their product, but man, they're like just a complete disaster. Like they can't get back to it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think, I think that, you know, we all know right now, like that most precious element is really time on the buyer and the SDR, like the SDR's calendar is chocolate block. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're only doing demos and discovery calls different order, but, with, with people that, you know, are really qualified. And so, you know, we both know you could end up having like one, two, three discovery calls and then demo. And in the end, that, that was not really a good pursuit. So, you know, what you're trying to do is be really respectful of the client's time, the prospect's time, and you want to let them know that. And that's why you're asking these questions, not 
because you would just want to close the sale. You want to make sure, is this going to work for both of us? Um, because, you know, it has to be about the client and, and that's not, you know, you're just not giving them lip service. You really want to figure out how you can help them. And I don't think it hurts to say at the end, like, I don't think we can help each other here. Like, I'd love to help you, but right now I just don't have the right information or, you know, we're not aligned in terms of what we can do. And, and that, that's okay, right? It's okay to give them a note. Yeah, for sure. And I think that almost because it's not as expected from the buyer side of things to be told no from the seller, like who in their right mind would deny taking money from another person. But you're right in the same sense that like, it is just going to end up being a waste of time or a headache for, for one or both parties if, it, if there is an alignment. And that's something that you want to avoid. And, and maybe something that um, you might be able to win in the future if you can come to some kind of conclusion later down uh, the line, like a few months, there is a new alignment, you guys have a new boss, you have a new strategy, maybe our solution looks a bit more attractive now than before. So that's one way I think that, and what you just brought up, reps can really stand out on discovery calls and, and maybe push back a bit and say like, you know, this isn't a great fit, let's revisit this at a later date. Um, how else are you seeing reps maybe stick out more on discovery calls than, than a good rep sticking out more on a discovery call than a bad rep or someone who is, like you said, just trying to win deals, just giving lip service, toss whatever they can over the fence to the, the AE team and sort of figure it out later. Um, there's well, obviously a big difference. So, so there's two things. One, going back to the, the pushing back respectfully. So I, I read a great example yesterday where someone was asked to do a demo and, you know, he really eloquently was going back and just saying, let me understand where we are here in the competitive situation. Um, and, and, and the client let him know that, look, you know, right now we're, we're leaning like, you know, 80, 90% towards this vendor already, but we need to do our due diligence. And so he kind of kept drilling into that and kind of going, okay, so you basically made your decision, but you need to see another product. Um, you know, so how much value is this demo going to add? You know, would it actually like, it, let's say the demo, like, let's say we blew it out of the water. Would that even make, you know, a, a substantial change in terms of your decision-making process? And they admitted no. So he said, listen, like, I, you know, honestly, I think it'd be great if maybe we revisited this in two weeks. And if you felt like there was an actually an opportunity for us, um, here's a link to all these great you know, videos and whatnot. But you know, he was basically say like right now you're saying, you know, we're that fourth option. That's not really going to you know, check any boxes, but you need to go through the motions. Let's not waste each other's time. Um, and, you know, he, he was able to do it really, really well. Um, and, and to your question around where I see SDR is doing a really good job. You know, this is tough when you're new, but when you have anecdotal stories that can really relate, you know, so we've helped another customer like you in your industry, or we know customers in your industry uh, have this problem, or we've worked with somebody like you and solved this problem, that really resonates versus just feature function, you know, we can do X, mm -hmm. do Y, um, you know, they, they can read all that. Like, you want to be that delta between here's what's on their website, uh, here's what they can read. What's all the stuff they can't find? That, that's the stuff you want to kind of surface up. That's what I see the really good SDR is doing, but also, you know, asking really good questions. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think what, what you've been saying really touches on the idea that it's more than just the product. Mm -hmm. um, a heavy amount of that early stage conversation with the buyer goes into the sales experience. I think just like you mentioned with personalizing discovery, you know, even if you're asking the right questions, even if you are coming prepared, if you don't have a process that really aligns with what your buyer's doing, or like you said, if you're just like trying your best to sell a prospect who you know is just kind of checking those boxes and maybe just doing some general surveying, uh, it's not going to be as effective. And so really going into like the, the, the personalization based on the buyer. Um, AJ mentioned initially that, you know, Today's buyers self-educate more than ever before. They're very independent. There's many more steps and many more stakeholders involved in today's modern B2B deal. And so when you're thinking about like going after a buyer or going after a, a team of stakeholders, how do you actually prepare for all of this? You know, we talked a little bit about methodology. We talked a little bit about kind of personalizing the journey and sticking out, but what should an SDR do before that call to make sure that they can go and give everything that they need to while also really aligning with what the buyer wants. Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's no secret to you guys, and maybe you'll have an episode around this, but kind of that sales and marketing tech stack, right? It's just like, it's just a mountain, right? Like there's so many tools out there 
Um, so, you know, I don't think we can sit here and go, well, if only there was a tool, the tools are there, right? So we can find the information. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you kind of how, I mean, I, I, I spent a ton of time. I mean, this is how we met on LinkedIn. So I think you can, you can like mine a ton of information around, you know, who the people are in that organization. But I think you really want to drill into like, where has AJ been before he was in this role? What did he do? Like, and, and, you know, like one tool I've used is, is Cheetah IQ that'll let you do some research on um, a prospect. And, you know, there's 10 Ks, there's Twitter, there's uh, one cool thing it'll look at is a 10, is it as a podcast. So we can all like, you know, scour the internet, but like cherry picking podcasts, that's tough. Right. So I think if you can like, uh, pick out those unique things so that when I reached out to AJ and I say, Hey, AJ, I know you're part of this uh, decision making team. Uh, I know you did XYZ with company ABC and, and maybe there's something personal in there. Right. But uh, you know, that th those things take a lot of time because um, personalization is, is, you know, it's like good copywriting. You, you want to, you know, you want to go to AJ and look, you know, you know that AJ, uh, you know, likes this type of music or, you know, AJ's this, this type of person. So you can either really knock it out of the park and we all know now you can do it with, with video, right? There's tons of platforms where I can send something to AJ. So I think you know, back to your question, Grayson, you know, you, you back to the old homework analogy, you know, you really want to dr drill into like, what's AJ's career trajectory been? So what kind of things do you think are going to stand out when you reach out to him and say, Hey, I know you're part of this decision making process. These things I'm assuming are important to you. Here's why I think, you know, you want to spend 15 minutes with me and my team where we can show you how we're going to solve these problems. Like you want something very uh, actionable, like that call to action when you're reaching out to say like, look, if you give me this much time, you're going to be this much better off because of it. And, and, so they don't feel like they're wasting time, you know, back to the, the, the precious element of time. Yeah, that's a good point. So I, I want to dive in a little bit more into call prep because uh, you brought up an interesting point about kind of how SDRs go about call preps and brought up questions about, you know, what, how do they decide what's important to prepare for and how do they decide where to get their information. Do you think that's something that marketing or maybe leadership should be helping them with? Or is that something that you feel the SDR should be creative about and maybe kind of make that part of their uniqueness is, is doing call prep in a way that they, they think is going to be the most successful for the buyer? That's a great question. I mean, I don't think, I don't think the company can't help. And I know some people work with organizations where they have someone like in a, in a education role around like sourcing this around their prospects, which is great. Not every company has that. Personally, I found if I build out a, a slide deck and this is my approach, you might want to do it on pen and paper. But if I essentially build out a slide deck about how I'm going to be pitching, even though I may not ever use the slide deck, it kind of walks me through this process where I'm saying, OK, I'm going to be talking to Grayson and I want to talk about these things. If I have these talking points, do they actually make sense? So, you know, it's kind of like you know, in, in Toastmasters where you're supposed to stand in front of the mirror and practice your speech, you know, I take that pitch deck and, um, you know, build it out with, with a storyline. And then I essentially like use that. So maybe I'll record myself and say, Hey, like if I'm actually using this and it may turn into an email, but you know, is it, does it actually make sense? Like, cause you know how sometimes you'll draft an email and you, you know, it's cause you want to ask your colleague a question and then you draft it and then you kind of look at it and you're like, I've, I've answered my own question. So, <laughs> you know, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're kind of going, okay, I've done this research. Um, does this actually make sense? And then, you know, there's, there's things like, you know, you can obviously go to your peers, but this is actually, um, you know, a, a really small plug, but you know, this is actually why we started five on Fridays. You know, we, saw, we saw that sometimes like peers didn't want to go to another colleague just because they felt like, mm, I don't know, this is maybe not the perspective I want. So it's a, it's a place for people to get together and basically practice that pitch. Um, and they may not know each other, may not work each other, but they're going to get a totally different perspective. So, you know, I'd say reach out to people in your network and they might be, you know, they might give you some insight. It's amazing how much people are happy to help if you just, if you just ask. Right, right. And go ahead and, uh, and plug that, Francois. Where, where can the audience find out more about Five on Fridays? I think that's a great resource for any SDR who's wanting to, to start networking, start meeting new people in their industry and, and really seeing things from outside of their industry or their perspective. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, just briefly, I mean, five on Friday live, which just started with sales reps. Um, we've got some senior SDRs, we've got some 
BDs and it's all community driven, volunteer driven. There's no monetization strategy. You essentially just sign up and we have one presenter. We have five to six uh, participants. And, you know, the, the format is very casual in terms of, you know, AJ could put up uh, his demo or you could go through your call strip, uh, Grayson, and, and we just give you feedback. And so, you know, it, it's just a great forum. I learned a ton as a participant. I've never been a presenter, but um, it's just a great place for people to practice um, and get feedback from people they've never met and people who probably don't work. You know, they're all probably in some type of software sales because they probably all met each other on LinkedIn. Um, but, you know, we had a guy on last week um, yeah, or two weeks ago that was uh, he had a, like a tobacco shop in Manhattan. Like he's selling pens and lighters. So um, he's trying to figure out how to sell those things right now. Um, and what did we have last week? Um, oh, yeah, we had a guy uh, talking about, uh, you know, selling a headshot um, like solution. So doing headshots for for LinkedIn. So. I mean, you know, selling is selling, right? I mean, whether you're selling pens or well, whether you're selling SaaS, um, you know, I, I want to say fundamentally, you know, what's the problem we're trying to solve? How are you trying to help someone? Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, I think it'd be great for, for SDRs um, as, as a resource. So, yeah, happy to plug it here. Thanks. For sure. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, really, really the most important thing uh, when it comes to like getting feedback and improving as an SDR. And in my opinion is the questions, which is what you uh, brought up earlier, Francois. And I think it's because every product, every business model, every buyer, every selling team is different. Um, and so you can't just take a template that you find online or maybe take a 10 year old playbook that the, the organization bought years ago and try to apply that and expect the same results every time. And so really going into questions, I know, I know it's really difficult for SDRs to kind of like branch out and really get good at questioning without coming off as like an interrogator. But what advice would you give to either a new SDR or maybe somebody who's wanting to improve how they conduct discovery calls? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I, I have the luxury and I think you guys have the luxury of doing this for a while. And so, you know, you, you get some of that experience. But, you know, one thing I still do, um, you know, for a few of the products I sell, I have a, like a 10 question questionnaire after I've reached out to a prospect or prospects reached out to me that I use as, as a way to help me build some of the questions for our call. So, and the reason I mentioned that is, you know, an SDR might go like, you know, I'm still junior. I don't know a ton of right questions to ask. So I, I see that conversation with this questionnaire. So they've now provided me some more, you know, specific and detailed information. So they may have filled out a lead form already, but you know, a lot of people just crank through that. So this is a very specific one about a product we sell and I ask them very specific information. So nine times out of 10, they'll provide that to me prior to the call. So that allows me to, to craft some questions based on that. And, you know, to your point, I think, um, you know, I don't know what the, the math or the science is. Somebody's probably got it figured out. But my, my assumption is you probably only want to be talking like 30 to 40% of the discovery call. So if you're asking good questions and listening, you'll, you know, be prompting them to provide this information. And maybe, maybe once in a while you'll interject to keep them going, but you want them to be talking. If you're talking the whole time, you're never going to hear anything about them. So if you can kind of like, you know, find ways to get them to, you know, provide information, then you can craft some really good questions that will then force them to surface up more information. So then it's less of an interrogation because I think an interrogation is kind of back and forth and back and forth versus tell me about this, um, you know, tell me about that. And so then it's more conversational. Like if you were sitting, you know, across from AJ and having a coffee and just saying, tell me about your trip. Tell me what you thought of this, right. Versus, you know, what do you do? Da, 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 right. So it's, it's not an interview as much. Um, but again, that's, it's kind of back to the old preparation side, right? Have you, have you, do you have that questionnaire? Um, can you ask some, some unique questions that aren't too interrogative, but you know, if they're looking at this product, you can say, look, like we know that when we know this information, we can ask better questions and give you more uh, specific information. So turning it around to, we want to make sure this is good use of your time. This is why we want this information. Yeah. And I think that it's almost analogous to like what you had brought up earlier, where as an SDR, you want to make sure that you're um, closing that delta between what 
someone can find out online versus what they can tell them. In the same vein, when you're on a discovery call, you don't want to just be taking orders and like getting your questions answered in this interrogated format because it's not helpful to them. They can do that with a bot online in some cases or just a form that they're filling out. And sure. whatever the SDR hands over to the AE, it's going to look the same as if it were, you know, a robot. So there's like that switch that you have to make. Um, and, and what Grayson brought up, the, the understanding of the right questions to ask. And when you brought up the questions to get them to open up, that's yeah. where like the bread and butter of the call comes in. Yeah. And I think you're also building some trust. So, you know, you talked about it earlier, Grayson, like at the early stages, you know, were you quick to get back to them? Did you ask them the right questions? You know, like, you know, people can just fumble on crazy things like, you know, emailing it to the wrong person. Like, so right out of the gate, like, you know, if they're already kind of going, oh man, these guys, like, they can't even get the shit together to, to book a discovery call versus like, man, they're asking good questions. They're bringing the right people. So you're building this trust where they go, man, like if we were actually a client, we feel like they would, you know, they want somebody who's going to look out for them and ask good questions. And, 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 you know, deep down they they may not admit this, but they'd love um, a vendor who is looking out for them and actually telling them no, sometimes like guys, no, mm -hmm. like don't put, don't put time into this. This doesn't make any sense. Right. And so they, they, they'll probably admire, um, they may not again tell you this, but not so much arrogance, but some confidence around, look, man, we got 200 clients or a thousand clients that have this product. We don't think you should do this. Like, even though we sell this, we don't think this is a good fit for you. That's building a lot of trust. And so building that trust there, um, you know, you may not think of it that way, but you're, you're doing it right, right out of the gate. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, that, I mean, this has been an incredibly insightful conversation. I wish that I had something like this when I were an SDR and I had all of this sort of information available to me when I was passing stuff off to closing reps. Um, I had to learn a lot by myself and I feel like I would have been a much different rep had I had someone like you who were kind of walking through this. So um, I know I definitely benefited from this and I hope that the audience did as well. Um, real quick, Francois, again, um, I know the five on Fridays, you kind of plug that maybe um, and a little bit, uh, if you, if you have like a last sort of, uh, impression on discovery calls and demos, and if you want to do another five on Friday, just end, um, I think that'd be a great place to kind of wrap all of this up. Yeah. Listen, uh, I'm super happy to jump on here. I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's my duty really to, to give back because I feel fortunate. There's been people who helped me. And I think in, in 2020 and beyond, like the, the access to things like what you guys are doing, um, uh, podcasts, uh, five on Friday. Um, reaching out to people via DM on LinkedIn. Like if you are willing to ask, people will likely help you. But back to our discovery discussion, ask good questions. Like there's really smart people on LinkedIn um, who were all like at, at where we were 10, 20 years ago, right? Like they, they started at the bottom. So um, if you want to ask someone for help, like make it look like you tried. So, you know, you can practice your discovery skills reaching out to um, people that you want to be mentored by. Like why, why should I, as, as a, as a, as somebody who could mentor you, give you the time? Well, if you craft a great kind of intro and give me a good reason why um, I'll probably, you know, get back to you uh, versus, you know, someone the other day asked if they could connect with me because they were mindlessly scrolling through LinkedIn and saw my profile. It's like, Oh, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. That's a great way to make feel someone feel special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I don't want to plug five on Friday uh, too much because I think, you know, what you guys are doing is really important, but um, you know, it, it is a great resource if people want to use it. And I think there's, there's some, some cross pollination, right? Like if people are learning here, they can jump over to five on Friday and, and uh, you know, try and sharpen their, their acts and um, you know, sharpen their skills. So um, this is cool what you guys are doing, but I think, you know, you know, if I was to wrap it up, I would say, you know, just remember that, that be respectful of that time. Like try and try and think of that 30 minutes or an hour that you're going to get as, you know, worth, you know, a hundred to $200 an hour to that client. How, how do you want to make sure that that's valuable to them? And, and you're, you're building trust and sometimes, you know, not saying what they want to hear will build trust. If you're saying yes to everything that, you know, deep down, they might kind of be going, this, this guy's just a yes person. Right. So, saying no um, or, or, or pushing back respectfully is, is okay, but you, you want to be able to say why. So we all love the idea of the challenger sale, but you don't just challenge mindlessly as well, right? So um, prepare, 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 um, you know, it, it shows, right? Whether it's in sports, 
your life, everything, right? So if you do the groundwork before, it's going to show up. So I think those would be my parting words on, on the discovery side. Awesome. Yeah, I think it really strikes to kind of the heart of sales, which is the ability to have empathy and the ability to be human. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that, you know, as, as the, the sales development role has, has grown with the predictable revenue model and with, with sales automation, I feel like a lot of people have lost touch, even so much so that it's no longer just emails and social messages that are automated. Sometimes it feels like having discovery calls with SDRs are a little bit automated too. And I, I just think that's a, that's a great way to think about it of like seeing time uh, of your buyer as money. That, that you're wasting and, and to really be as precious as you can with how you spend it while also remembering like it's not about you it's about building that connection so that maybe something can come out of it in the future but focusing on them first yeah absolutely for sure well awesome friends well hey um yeah. thank you so much for joining us for the, the sales development represent series um it's great to have you on to talk about discovery calls and um if, if you don't mind, could you share just a little bit about where uh, people can find out more about you, maybe a website or maybe a LinkedIn handle? Yeah, I mean, find me on, on uh, LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out and connect. Uh, it's my first initial F and then my last name, B-O-U-R-D-E-A-U. Uh, five on Friday is five, the number five, on Friday dot live. And then by day, I, I work at Encore Business Solutions, um, and you can find us uh, if you just Google Encore Business Solutions. So yeah, feel free to, to reach out to me. I'm happy to help and, and give back. And um, you know, there's lots of lots of bright young SDRs out there that just need a little bit of a, a boost once in a while. So uh, it's the least I can do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you're a, a bright young SDR watching this, make <laughs> sure to uh, give give Francois a follow. He's looking out for you. <laughs> awesome, man. Love it, guys. Yeah, thanks for, well, thanks thanks for, for stopping on. Thanks for joining us. For sure. Cheers, guys.